we're going to look at one more signal type that we could generate today, and that's the transient signal. Like if you remember from the, uh, from the oscilloscope demo, when we were tapping on the microphone, we saw this nice transient signal right here where I tapped on it, and then it rung down, and we could see a sinusoidal waveform in there and kind of an exponential decay. And we could build that same type of signal using MATLAB. So I'm using that same script that I wrote for just the DC and the AC signals, the sinusoidal signals, and I made another section right here called the transient wave. And I'm going to use the same machinery to generate a time scale, but I'm going to make it have different ranges. So I'm going to keep that time scale the same, and but I'm going to make it start before zero and end in three seconds instead of one second, just to get some more range and you know, some more points on there. And then we have a decay time constant right here, and that's going to go into the exponential function that's going to decay the sine wave towards zero. So the other thing we need to do to make it mathematically correct is put a step function in there. And so you probably remember from EK307, step function is zero for time before zero, and then one for time after zero. So I do think right, a tricky thing right here where I use the MATLAB find function, and I find where my time base is greater than or equal to zero, and then those numbers get put into an index. Like they said, the index indices of the numbers that are greater than zero in the time base get put into this index, and it's going to probably be an array because there's a bunch of points that are greater than zero. And then I make the first part of the step function just using the zeros function that makes a vector that's a one by length of time base seconds long, and that's all zeros. So right now you can hear there's actually some superimposed two-year-old in the in the background. That's uh, you know a signal that's being added to my voice as I speak. So now I have a vector of zeros that's the same length as time base, and I could use the index from the find and then I could index a one into all the points that are greater than zero. So that's kind of a cool way to do it without using a for loop or a while loop. You know, the other way might be to say while time base is less than or equal to zero, you know, the step function should be zero, and then if it's greater than, it should be one. But mathematically, this is more efficient or computationally using MATLAB. So we have our step function made now. Now we can make a sine wave so same sine wave, amplitude of 0.5, frequency of 10 hertz. This generates our sine wave right here, that function. Then we have our exponential decay, which is an exponential function. And we, sub we have the negative of the time base in there, because we want a decay. Then we divide that by the decay constant up here, which is 0.3. And the decay constant tells us how fast it's going to go decay down towards zero. So now, to make our complete signal, we multiply point by point. That's what the dot star means. In other words, we're multiplying each increment in time, the same or the same increment in time for all three vectors. And uh, then we get this V signal right here. So we're going to plot that. So I'm going to introduce another thing in the plotting right here. If you put in this attribute called display name, it'll actually plot and it'll remember the name of the signal that you're plotting. And so I'm calling that, it's a string, it's going to be exponential constant, and then I do a number to string where I convert the decay time constant, which was 0.3, into a string so it'll display it in MATLAB. That's kind of a cool thing. That'll allow you to self-document your graph so you're not going to be having to do this stuff manually. Then the usual X label and Y label things, and I could run this. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to take it from the top, though, and run all of these things at the same time, you know, all of our signals. And when we do that, we get this graph right here. It's a little hard to read. So there's a cool tool in MATLAB called the Plot Browser. So if you go into the View Plot Browser, it brings up this window right here. And because I named all my waveforms, and I the first three I named using the legend function, if we go back to the MATLAB really quick. I'm not sure if you saw that, but I used the legend function for the first three, and I put in strings, you know, DC constant signal, and then this one's a string concatenation, which tells me the sinusoid frequency, and what frequency it actually is in hertz, Then the last one is sinusoid. 
And you can see those names are over here. You know, in addition to being in the legend that we plotted, they're over here in the plot browser. So now say if I just wanted to look at my exponential, if I click on it, it'll highlight which one it is, which we also know what it is because I labeled it. And I could uncheck these boxes and then we'll just see the exponential waveform. So that's kind of neat. So I could go a step further, like say if I wanted to try a different decay constant. So instead of 0.3, maybe I wanted to see what a 0.1 decay constant would look like. If I just run this section again, because I have the hold on and I have the display name in there, it should just add that graph to my other graphs. And it does just that. You could see now we just added this one right here, which might be a difficult color to see. I could turn it on and off, turn it on and off. And I could also change the color of this really easily, just to make it more, more visible for you right now. We'll make it that purple color right there. So now that's more visible. And then we have the the constant with the exponential decay constant of 0.3 is the red one. And then the purple one is the exponential decay constant of 0.1. So some more MATLAB tricks. So I hope this is useful. So we'll be doing a lot of plotting in the lab.